have a really cool study to tell you about. More than two and a half million years ago, an epoch of time began that would be known as the Pleistocene. At the onset of the Pleistocene, there were no Homo sapiens, and there wouldn't be for more than another two million years. Homo sapiens wouldn't emerge until 300,000 years or so before the present day, at the very end of the Pleistocene. Originating in eastern Africa, Homo sapiens spread out into the Fertile Crescent, and then they dispersed elsewhere across the world. The Homo sapiens made shelter and clothes for themselves from animal skins and plant tissues, and they fashioned tools and weapons from the wood and stone that filled the world around them. This natural world was also filled with monsters, with great beasts far larger and stronger than any man, and they required a team of experienced hunters to kill. Whole groups of Homo sapiens needed to gather together with sufficient technology, like bone spears or bows and arrows, in order to kill an animal like a mammoth or a mastodon. Massive bears roamed the boreal wastes, giant panthers hid in the shadows of untamed jungles, and saber-toothed tigers stalked their prey through the world's mountains. One such beast in the Paleolithic world was the Megatherium, the giant ground sloth. These were also massive mammals, like a bear in the shape of their body, like an elephant in size, but with longer arms, longer curling claws, and a face that had features of both sloth and bear. These ground sloths would pull branches down from trees and eat from the foliage, selecting only the best quality food with their prehensile lips. They lived in the woodlands and grasslands of the Americas, which, unfortunately for them, would become invaded by the migrating hordes of biped apes, known as the Homo sapiens. These giant animals were herbivores, and they didn't have any major predators for much of their existence, so they would have been largely unsure how to respond to a human threat, especially because a human threat would be very, very rapid and very hard to adapt to and respond to because the humans are so much smarter than the animals are. Groups of humans would take their stone-tipped sticks and hunt down the giant ground sloths for their ample fur and meat. The sloths would rear up on their hind legs and make flailing strikes with their long arms to cut their attackers down with their long, curved claws. They would have been a formidable match for Paleolithic humans, with far greater physical strength and a far greater reach of arm than any human. It would have required teams of spear-equipped hunters to separate one from its herd and take it down. But in the end, the giant ground sloths fed the growing human populations of the Americas until they were eventually hunted to extinction, sometime around 10,000 years ago. The study that I want to talk about, which was published in the journal Science Advances, documents a really exciting discovery. The preserved footprints of a battle between one of the last giant sloths and the human hunters who sought to kill it. The study found tracks at the far northern reaches of the Megatherium habitat, in the White Sands National Monument in New Mexico. In the words of the researchers, their efforts, quote, revealed tracks and trackways of proboscidea, mammoth, folivora, ground sloth, carnivore, canid and felid, and arteriodactyla, bovid, and camelid. The tracks occur close to the surface of a playa, an uh, alkali flat, and are impressed into thinly bedded gypsiferous and silicoclastic muds and sands, unquote. Basically, they found a spot where wind erosion exposed the preserved tracks from all of these Paleolithic creatures. They also found among these tracks some human footprints that were contemporaneous with some of the animal footprints, specifically those of a giant sloth. They found that the humans were following the sloth, moving behind it, in its tracks, taking the giant uncomfortable strides it required to step from sloth footprint to sloth footprint. Reading their paper, you can almost see the series of attacks and retreats and attacks and retreats that the humans performed to wear down and kill the giant sloth. The researchers say, and I quote, the sloth trackways show several circular and elliptical track patterns that have never been reported. 
They consist of one or more deformed pest tracks, surrounded by a circle of irregular impressions, which show evidence of manis claw marks. Unquote. Uh, skipping a few sentences ahead, they also say, quote, and they appear to represent heel or pivot traces. In one case, a line of human toe impressions leads to the circle center, suggesting that someone approached on raised toes. In another, an adult human track occurs in the middle of one circle. These structures occur both independently and in association with overlapped human sloth trackways. Sloth trackways show sharp changes in the direction of travel. These inflections are associated with concentrations of human tracks. In the absence of human tracks, sloth trackways progress in a straight or curvilinear fashion, unquote. The researchers also say, and I quote, The circular sloth trackways are consistent with defensive behaviors, in which sloths reared on their hind limbs, freeing their forelimbs for defense. We term these structures flailing circles. To be clear, the human-sloth interactions are not limited to one sloth trackway, or track size, but to several. It is, however, difficult to say definitively whether the sloths were traveling as a group, and therefore were being collectively harassed, or whether these features represent successive harassment events. The co-location of these trackways favors the former, in which case the results have implications for the social behavior of sloths." By compiling all of this spatial and temporal data, the researchers concluded that these tracks were made at approximately the same time, meaning that the sloth and the humans represented here were interacting with each other in real time. These are quite literally the preserved forensics of an ancient battle between a group of homo sapien hunters and a giant paleolithic beast. The sloth would have stood there on its hind legs, swinging around and scraping the ground with its long claws on the end of its long arms. It would have tried to slash and slice all of the human attackers. And the humans, meanwhile, would have probably been surrounding it in a circle, holding their stone-tipped spears and making jumps and jabs to try and poke it and slice a muscle or cut a nerve or maybe poke it in the eye or the ear, anything to disable it and bring it down to its knees. And this bloody dance, this combat, this classic scene of the hunt would have played out again and again and again across the landscape of the Americas, until one day the last Megatherium was killed and the species was driven into extinction. 